So we're halfway there. We've created our static object and we're modifying the alpha based on whether the enemy is visible. Okay, but as we look away, that's not coming down again. We need to add that in. So in our player health, we're decreasing the health in this function. Just do a bit of cleanup. That's when we're checking that. Okay, so we're going to be doing pretty much the same thing as decrease health, except we're going to be increasing the health instead. So we can copy this whole function now. Now, there is a consideration with this variable here. If we have two functions, we're going to want to use this in both of them. So we could either calculate it in the other one as well as we are here. But let's look at the factors that come into this variable. We have starting health and health decay rate. Now, health decay rate is set in the inspector even before the script runs. And starting health, that is derived from health, which again is set up even before the script runs. But we don't assign starting health until the start function. So we could move this out. Let's make this a global variable. So we're going to be using it in our next one. So up here with our health decay, we have placed that variable there as a global. Now, because it's something that only the script uses and it's nothing we want to modify at all on, in the inspector or by another object, let's make it private. And so we don't have to assign it here either at the moment. I'm just going to copy that. And then we're just going to leave it at declaring that modifier. Now, we're using starting health, so after we've assigned our starting health value, now let's do the calculation. Okay, so we've set that up, we only need it once, we're storing it in a global variable, but we can use that through different functions, and we're only calculating it once, so that's just making that more optimal. Okay, now let's look at using decrease health, but to increase health. So let's just copy all that. Now we're going to change this function to increase health. Now we're incrementing, so we're adding to itself. So we add there. Calculate the alpha as normal because that's all based off calculations we're doing. And it's going the right way, so we'll leave that alone. And we check if the health has fallen below zero. On the other side of that, we could check if the health has fallen above our starting health. So if the health rise is too high, this could throw out the whole alpha equation too. So let's change this. Check if the health is now above. Above the maximum health, which is our starting health. So now if health is greater than or equal to our starting health, what are we going to do here? We want to stop it from getting any bigger. So let's just say health is going to equal starting health. That'll stop it rising above that value. Now we don't really need to do this here because when we actually have the game built, as soon as we fall our health below zero, we fall into the lose condition. We're going to be loading a new scene immediately. But while we're testing, just so we don't get strange things happening, let's just do the same thing here. The health falls below zero, let's make it equal zero. Okay, so we've just made a new function. So as we're calling decrease health from the MPC script, we need to call increase health when the MPC is not visible by the player. Oh, and we jumped right to it. So in our slender logic part of the script, so we check if visible. We'll do some more checks, and at some stage, if that all falls true, then we're going to decrease health. Now, if we're not visible, we can increment the health here. But that function isn't on this script, 
it's on the player health script. Player health script dot call function increase health. We'll save that out. Now we do some other checks if visible before we decide that we are going to decrease health. Let's just copy that. I can see a couple more places where that would be applicable. Okay, so if the enemy is chasing, then we've decided that he's too far away. So we're not decreasing health there. So let's increase health chasing. So if we've already decided anywhere we're chasing, we're increasing the health, we can just jump down here and pop one in here too. So if the line cast hit returns an object that is not named the same as our target, the enemy is not visible, so we'll increase the health there too. Now I can't see any condition where the line cast would not work, because unlike a ray cast, which could not hit anything, we are setting a start position and an end position. So I really can't see, no matter what, we're either going to return a hit name of the target, or we're going to return a hit name of any collider object in between the enemy and the target. So we really don't need to add an else there at all. So I think that's all the modifications we need to increase and decrease health. Everything you got there? That's looking good. Let's just test that. The enemy's over there. If I turn to my right, let me fade the texture from the start. Just so we know it's working. If I hit play, it goes back to. Just to prove that. Okay, so we know that's working. We don't need to see that all the time. It's our static object. Let's just turn the out down so we can see. Okay, now let's play test over there and he's too far away but that effect has taken place now as we look away it starts to restore okay that's a better distance for him to be working in okay so the static effect is coming in the static effect is going out five seconds looks like a little bit long too so let's just see what else we can test while we're here are we happy with the flashlight with the range? This is quite an open environment, so it's a bit hard to tell. We might be able to increase the range on that. Now let's go back up to the papers. There was something I noticed before. We can bring it up again and fix that. Yeah, you can't even see the texture, it's so washed out. Now that is the intensity. So let's just pause it there even and see what kind of values because we're going to modify the values in runtime so they're not going to retain when we hit stop. So we're looking at the intensity. It's not far off the default one, is it? If we go 1.25 or 1.2. Alright, let's just try 1.2. Uh, resume play. Okay, so none of those textures appear washed out, except when you get close, but if you shine a torch right up on something, it's going to appear like that. What about those ones in the back? Yep. We can quite clearly read what's on those now, where we couldn't before, it was washed out. Okay, what's the next thing we're going to look at? Range. So there's a tree not too far off there. Here's our range. Yeah, we started to bring up how far our light affects things. 50? That might be too far. Mind you, even though that's the full scope, which tree are we looking at? We're looking at that first tree there. So even though we've said 50, after that's 25. Maybe. And that tree is only just showing up, especially the one behind it. Okay. Alright, so let's see if we can try playing around with 50. Now the last one was the enemy max range. Now he was starting to affect our health even before we could even see him. So our maximum range. So we can play with that. So let's 
quickly remember what we've got here. 51.2. So let's up that range to 50. Now I can see it without the static being there. And drop the intensity down to 1.2. While I'm here, I'm just going to give the light a little bit of coloration. Let's just bring it off that wire. Even just slightly. Okay, so that's the flashlight that we've modified there. Let's go back to the enemy. And his range. Now, we had the flashlight at 30. Now it's at 50. But we're saying, even if we say two thirds of 50. Alright, let's set it to about 30, 35. Let's try 35 for the maximum range before the enemy becomes visible if we're facing him. Let's hit play. I turn to the right. Okay, we did see him and then it kicks in. So that's a better distance. Now he's coming closer. Alright, let's walk around our scene a little bit. Okay, getting a bit more light on that hill, which is nice. Okay, so that's a I like the range setting too. There's some pretty good tweaking there. And you can see some objects off in the distance. They don't take long to run to. And we come up and we can see those textures. They're not washed out. Okay, so those tweaks look good. And checking our ray cast now that there is no collider on that static object. Our sorry, it's our sphere cast, isn't it? Our sphere cast still works. That's the last thing is the time. It's up to you. I think that's a little slow. So that is on the player, the health decay rate. Okay, I already dropped it down to four. Let's drop it down to three. So we've only got three seconds. Mind you, that is still a long time when you're rushing around and you've got the adrenaline going. So at a distance it was probably not very fair. Let's try it from a distance again. That 35 is looking maybe a little close. So you can see him moving for a bit. Okay, that's three seconds. It still feels like a while, doesn't it? Okay, I'll show you where all these variables are that you can tweak for yourself. But now you've started to put some of the things together. Um, have a look at your scene. I mean, you could be in an indoor environment. I've got a very open outdoors environment here. There's not many points of reference for my light to shine off and things like that. It's quite open. Now, if there's lots of things around, he might not be able to walk around objects until he gets closer anyway. Anyway, that's increasing and decreasing the alpha on the static and increasing and decreasing the health. So finally, let's have a look at animating that static. 